Our next question, Brother Ghulam from Norway emails, and he says that in Norway, the days go exceedingly long, and in some parts of Norway, the sun does not even set. And so how should fasting be done in those lands in which there is no sunrise or sunset, and they're extremely close to the North or the South Poles? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ so this question comes to us from the other side of the world, from a land far, far away. And uh, on a personal anecdote, I actually visited Norway. And when I went to uh, Norway, um, I uh, intentionally took a trip to the northernmost city uh, that had a masjid at the time. And I heard that after that time, there's a masjid that is even more north than that. And I visited, this is 2014, I believe. There's a YouTube video, just Google my name in Norway and the city is called Tromso, T-R-O-M-S-O. So I, I wanted to visit the masjid that is the closest to the North Pole. So uh, I took a trip specifically to go visit that masjid. There's a small musalla. I gave the khutbah there, interacted with, there was at least 150 people uh, in, the, in the masjid over there. So I visited this land uh, and the smallest uh, or the, the, the northernmost masjid in the world. Then I found out that uh, a few years ago, a community in a city or village above them also built a masjid. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, look where you know Islam has spread around the globe. And when I visited uh, Tromso, it was interesting to see that all of the houses, their windows, and I lived in one of the brothers' houses over over there, I spent the night over there, the, their windows have special shutters that when you press the button, it becomes 100% dark. And I said, what is the need, re, need for this? And he said that for most of the year, there, either there is perpetual sunlight or there is no sunlight whatsoever. For four to five months of the year, the sun is up. And then for the next, you know, then there's a, a month or two which in, in which there's a little bit of day and night. And then next four and five months, there is no sun whatsoever. So if you wake up at 2 a.m., uh, the sun will be above you. 2 a.m. and the sun has not gone up. And in that, in that time frame, in the, I went in the winter months, so it was a, a little bit of, of uh, night and then most of it was dark. Uh, but if you go uh, in the middle of the summer or in the middle of the winter, it will be full sunlight or full darkness. And if you look at the sun in the, the, the summertime, it won't go up and down. It's amazing. The sun will go round above you. If you look up there, if you look up at one time, it's going to be there. And then there, 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 it's just going to go round in a circle. That's how the sun rises and sets, right? This is in the northernmost. This is not in the capital in, in, in Oslo, but to up north in, in Tromso and other places close to the uh, North Pole. Now our brother is asking, what is to be done in those lands where uh, the, the, the days of the fast are extremely long or maybe even no sunrise and sunset? And the response to this, this is a very, very convoluted topic and there are over 10 opinions on this issue, no exaggeration. And once again, like I explained in my last um, Q&A, for those of you that are watching the full, if you are watching this a separate clip, then the previous Q&A was about the degrees of your following. And I said the same thing then, the degrees of uh, Fajr, the same thing I said there, I will say here, which is all of this Q&A for today is for information purposes only. It's just for you to know, in the end of the day, you will follow your local sheikh. You will follow your local masjid and community. You will follow what your people are doing. This is just for information purposes uh, for those that are living far away. Or uh, if a community or a board member is in charge and they don't know any better, they can listen to some advice from many people. This is one of the advice that they will listen to. And then they can make an informed decision if they are the ones in charge. Otherwise, the average Muslim simply follows their local authorities. And especially when it comes to these types of culture sensitive issues, I have always always um, said that stick with your local ulama for the specifics. I can speak generics and I'm, I will speak generics and I'll give you a number of opinions that are well known in the global community. But in the end of the day, uh, my own personal opinion is that you should not listen to my opinion. You should listen to the opinion of ulama who live amongst you and who understand the dynamics and the pros and cons in a better manner. I don't live amongst you. And therefore, 
I might have, and I do have my own hypothetical, uh, uh, what I consider to be the strongest position, but I hesitate to tell you to do it because I don't live in your lands. And I want you to follow trained ulama, reputable ulama who live in your lands. If you have an alim in your town or village up north in, in um, uh, Norway, follow. If not, the local communities closest to you or in Oslo or other places, there are plenty of uh, scholars in Oslo. I've met a number of them. So you should go to those ulama and find out from them because they understand the situation far better than I do because they live amongst you. So again, the answer today is for educational purposes, for information purposes. Purposes. It's not, I'm not telling you specifically which one you should follow. That is something that uh, it is culturally uh, uh, sensitive. And there are perhaps dynamics I'm not fully aware of. And there are perhaps issues that I'm not cognizant of because I'm speaking to you from a, another land. Nonetheless, for information purposes, it's interesting for the rest of us to know. This is not a new issue. And in fact, uh, even in the Ottoman times, there was a lot of back and forth because the Ottomans, they conquered what they called the Balkan, the Balk Balkan lands. And they knew of these lands where the sun uh, did not rise or did not set. And so Ottoman muftis in the Hanafi madhab, they gave some fatwas here and there and it trickled down to the other madhab as well. And so you do find a little bit of discussion. However, in modern times, obviously, this issue has uh, been discussed uh, a lot more and many fatwa councils and many ulama around the globe have opined on this issue. And so there are a number of opinions on this issue. And of course, um, uh, before we begin, realize that uh, we're, we're, we're actually talking about the multiple scenarios all at once. The first scenario is that there is a sunrise and sunset, but it's very long. So maybe the fast is 19 hours, 20 hours. Maybe uh, there's a place in, um, I believe in Finland, where the sun does rise and set, but the day is 22 hours long, right? So that's a very long time. But it, there is still sunrise and sunset. Then you have areas where the sunrise and sunset is not quite dark, but it's twilight. And this, for example, even in uh, in Scotland, in places in Scotland, I went to Scotland, uh, 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 northern Scotland, is it Aberdeen or something? And, and I remember clearly that, you know, you walk outside at 11 p.m., 11 p.m. And it's like what we think like 6 p.m. over here, twilight. It's not dark. You think like it's Maghrib or a little bit after Maghrib, right? Well, after Maghrib, but it's not gonna go full dark over there. So that's far north. So it's the, the, the sunrise and sunset there is sunrise and sunset, but there's no darkness. And that's because you're in that twilight area, which is the civil or the nautical twilight. You are not in the astronomical, you don't get beyond that. And then you have the furthest north, which is like Tromso, in which the sun does not even set or rise for months on end. For months, you'll see the sun just go in circles and you wake up at 3 a.m. to pray tahajjud and the sun is outside, right? And for six months later, you wake up at 3 p.m. and it is pitch black dark. And that's another scenario. So what is to be done in all of these uh, places? I'm just gonna summarize the various opinions out there and then I will conclude by telling you to not listen to me, listen to your local ulama. This is for information purposes. Know all of these different fatwas are there, whichever one you choose, alhamdulillah, ulama bigger than me have said them. And inshallah, fi kullin khair. It's not something that, uh, it's not something that inshallah anybody is gonna be punished over. This is a very difficult scenario, very difficult scenario. Which one is correct? Which one is right? Which one is wrong? Inshallah, they're all rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Follow your community and follow your local ulama. But for information purposes, what, uh, what are some of the opinions out there? So the majority opinion in lands where there is actual sunrise and sunset is that there is simply no other alternative. You must fast according to the sunrise and sunset. And this is the position of the majority of councils and ulama. And they say, even if it goes to 20, 21, 22 hours, then that is the fast. However, if the fast is overwhelming to people, if they have difficult laborious jobs, if a sister is pregnant, if, 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 then obviously uh, the leeway for them is gonna be much lower, the burden is much lower than the leeway for us, right? The burden to not fast. So if your land has a 20 hour long fast 
and you're expected to work in the fields, that's your job, or your difficult situation, you're a pregnant lady, for example, but if you were maybe in America and it's 13 hours fast, you could do it. But that's like a 20 hour fast, you cannot do that. So we say the bar has been lowered. And if you're not able to do it, 20 hour fast, then you make up in the month that is easier for you. After two, three months, four months, you make it up for the days that you cannot fast. But technically, if you're able to fast, you fast. And the default for most average men and women, it is possible to fast 18, 19 hours. And this is actually done uh, even as a fad and as a technique for losing weight called intermittent fasting, where people will maybe eat one meal a day and it is fine. They will live like this. It's not a, it is something that is not harmful to the body once the body becomes accustomed to for many people, but not for all. So that is the majority position. However, even in this, there are dissenting uh, voices. Uh, and the Majma' Fiqh al-Islami, which is one of the bodies that I look up to the most, they actually also give the exact same fatwa, that as long as there is actual sunrise and sunset, well then, we're gonna have to go with sunrise and sunset. And even if it's long, that will be the fast. However, what is to be done if it is more north than sunrise and sunset? Then you don't actually have sunrise and sunset. This is where we have a number of opinions. One of the scholars of the last generation, Sheikh Mustafa Zarqa, he said that any time the fast is unreasonably long, and he didn't define unreasonably long, but he said even when there's sunrise and sunset, if it's 20 hours or something, that in that case, he said, the people can follow Mecca. They can follow Mecca. Or they can follow the closest Muslim land where the fasts are reasonable. And the uh, Majma al Fiqh al Islami, they said that if there is no sunrise and sunset, then they should follow the closest land where there are Muslims residing, where there is sunrise and sunset, and that will become their timing. So if you are in North Norway and there's no sunrise and sunset, you will look to South Norway, Oslo for example. Oslo generally has sunrise and sunset. So you will look to Oslo and the timings of Oslo, or I'm just giving an example, the timings of the city where there are Muslims and there is sunrise and sunset will become your timings uh, north to that. And this is the fatwa of the Majma' al-Fiqh al-Islami and it is the one that I personally am uh, sympathetic to. But again, don't listen to me, listen to your local um, ulama. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Hamidullah, and by the way, this fatwa is also the fatwa of the Dar al-Ifta of Saudi Arabia, also my teacher Sheikh bin Uthaymeen and also Sheikh bin Baz and others, they also give the same fatwa that the people living in those lands where there is no sunrise and sunset, should look to the closest lands south of them, the closest cities south of them, where there are Muslims residing and where fasting is taking place and there is sunrise and sunset and take the timings from them. Uh, another scholar, Dr. Muhammad Hamidullah, a great alim of hadith and a uh, person who authored many, many books and discovered many treatises. Dr. Muhammad Hamidullah, he had an interesting fatwa that in those lands, far north or whatnot, we should simply take a minimum, a maximum, and do a cutoff beyond that. And for reasons beyond the scope of my lecture today, he said eight to 16. So eight hours is the minimum fast. Therefore, because you see guys, we're talking about the long days, do realize in uh, 15, 20 years when Ramadan comes in December, right? Literally, no exaggeration, in some of these lands, the fast is gonna be two hours. Okay, so you have a full suhoor. By the time it comes to iftar, you're like, yeah, it's all right, I'm full, I don't need to eat, you know. Because that's, you're gonna have a full suhoor, right? And then you're not gonna eat in two hours. So Sheikh uh, Hamidullah said, just like the people have to suffer in the winter, in the summertime, so then uh, in the winter time, we have to do something for them. So what did he suggest? He suggested, you extend the smallest days to at least six hours, uh, uh, sorry, uh, eight hours, eight hours, excuse me. You extend the smallest days to eight hours and you cut off the longest days to 16 hours. So if the fast is 22 hours, you say 16 for them. You start at suhoor, whenever there's fajr, and then 16 hours later, you call it a day until you get to the eight hours. That was his fatwa. And again, yeah, he has his, his um, reasons uh, for that. Another great scholar of the last generation, uh, a great alim and a person who really did a lot for the Muslims of the Ummah, Sheikh Faisal uh, Molvi, Sheikh Faisal Molvi of Lebanon. 
he was a very learned uh, author, uh, he said uh, that uh, those lands in which the sun sets at least 12 degrees below the horizon, i.e. we're talking about the nautical uh, twilight and the nautical dawn, that they should simply follow the nautical and not the astronomical. And so he basically said, use the smallest degree possible and stick with uh, that. And that's a position that is an interesting uh, position. Yet another opinion, states that they should follow the timings of the sunrise and sunset of their own locality on the last day that there was an actual sunrise and sunset, right? And so even in Tromso, even in that little village up there, there is a sunrise and sunset for a period of the year. Then for the bulk of the year, it goes away. The last day there was an actual sunrise and sunset, they should take that and keep it as their fast until the next uh, sunrise, sunset, and then that will be the next, you know, portion over there. Uh, and then the final fatwa I will mention, and of course there's actually more than these, the final fatwa I'll mention is the fatwa of the Darul Ifta of Egypt, uh, which is uh, part of uh, connective with Azhar University as well. And the Darul Ifta of Egypt is perhaps the fatwa that is most commonly done by many of the Muslim communities up north. When I visited Tromso, they told me that this is the fatwa they were using back then. This is like seven years ago. I don't know what this is the situation now. And the Darul Ifta of Egypt, they said that in those northern lands, the people should follow Mecca. And so the, the timing is uh, meaning, when I say the timings, I mean how long is the fast of Mecca? If it's 14 hours, 15 hours, 13 hours, however long it is, right? Uh, generally, the fasts are generally around uh, 14 hours, right? Generally in, in, in Arabia. So they should look at Mecca and the timing of the Ramadan, uh, how many hours is the fast? They then start from Fajr whenever they're gonna pray Fajr. And from that, they simply add the timings of Mecca, 14 and a half hours, if it is 14 and a half hours, and then they break over there. So they use that as an arbitrary reference because they said Mecca is the holy city and they have their reasons for uh, doing so. To conclude all of this, dear brothers and sisters, I mean, my position already, I already explained to you that which one I'm sympathetic to, but in the end of the day, I do not advise you to follow me. I advise you to follow your local scholars of your lands who live amongst you and who understand really the, the ramifications and the pros and cons of each of these uh, positions and who understand um, uh, other things that I might not be able to see from my uh, perspective. And at the end of the day, the unity of the Muslims is more important. Alhamdulillah, all of these positions are there. Whichever position you follow, there is khair and good in it. The most important thing, Fattakullah Mastata'atum. You fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can. And dear brothers and sisters, wherever you are in the world, if the fasting is really not possible for you medically, you will fall sick. A reputable doctor tells you that if you have, you know, diabetes or something of this nature and you cannot fast for 17 hours, 20 hours, even if it's 12 hours and you're a diabetic and you cannot fast, remember, you then constitute a sick patient and a sick patient by the explicit text of the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, if you are sick, then don't fast. Don't worry about fasting. If you become cured, make it up. If not, then you give a kafara. Do not make the religion more difficult. Fasting is an obligation for those who are capable of doing it. Therefore, if you're capable of doing it, given your circumstances, alhamdulillah. If not, alhamdulillah. And there are alternatives that need to be done with that. Inshallah ta'ala, I will see you next week. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa رحمة الله وبركاته يا من أجبت دعاء نوح فانتصر وحملته في فلكك المشحون يا من أحال النار حول خليله روحا وريحانا بقولك كون